travelling to Buckinghamshire, we join Compass Paranormal for a journey into the infamous Hellfire Caves. The West Wickham Caves, more commonly known as the Hellfire Caves, are said to be ancient, although the unique labyrinths were extended in the 1740s by Sir Francis Dashwood, founder of the Brotherhood of St Francis of Wickham, later known as the Notorious Hellfire Club. No doubt inspired by his grand tours of Europe and the Ottoman Empire, Dashwood held chapter meetings in the caves and members included Lord Sandwich, John Wilkes and other senior aristocrats and statesmen. Benjamin Franklin was also a close friend and visited West Wickham often. Much has been written about the secret meetings held here and this exclusive gentleman's club has gained a notorious reputation over the years. Wine, women, song and mock religious ceremonies all occurred here. Although the notion that the club members were devil worshippers is more likely a fabricated story from the 19th century as there is no evidence this practice ever happened. Of course, the caves have had a long reputation for being haunted, with many accounts of alleged paranormal activity. The most common account is that of Suki, a local girl who was murdered here. She was a chambermaid at the local inn and longed to marry into the gentry, spurning the advances of the local boys before eventually accepting a proposal from a wealthy local man. This turned out to be a cruel hoax, plotted by the local boys, and when a fight erupted, stones were thrown and she died in the passages from a blow to the head. Suki's ghost is often seen in the banqueting hall, with numerous sightings of a young lady dressed in a white Victorian wedding dress, and visitors have also reported hearing screams and crying coming from this area. Also, the ghost of an elderly man has been witnessed in the cave system, with one account seeing the apparition walk through a wall and vanish. For this investigation of this intriguing location, Mandy, Kerry and I are guests of Compass Paranormal, along with the team at UKPM Radio and guest medium Ross Bartlett. Okay, here we are at the Hellfire Caves in Buckinghamshire. We're very, very excited to be here. We've joined uh, Compass Paranormal uh, once again, and also uh, the guys from UKPM Radio. I'm here with uh, Kerry and Mandy from Spiral as well, so we're really looking forward to uh, investigating here. Incredible caves. Uh, we'll have a little walk around in a minute, and uh, hopefully you'll join us for the night for hopefully a bit very exciting evening. I'm so excited. Yeah. Really looking forward to it. Been looking forward to this one for years, really. I've been waiting to come here. I don't know anything about it. And because of that, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to spoil it for Kerry. For now. Hi, I'm Richard. I'm one of the team members of Compass Paranormal Events. We're here tonight at the Hellfire Caves down in Buckinghamshire. We've got a good group of guests and we're joined by some of the Spiral team and the UKPN radio guys have come along to join us as well, so we're really looking forward to this investigation. Hi, uh, my name's Ross Bartlett. I'm the medium here this evening and we're at the Hellfire Caves. Should be a very interesting night coming up. I've picked up on a few things already and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I know some of the guests are already getting into the mood of things and I'm looking forward to it. Good night. Have a little wander around, aren't we? Yeah. Just seeing. We're going to walk down a little bit further while um, while getting ready and have a little look around. Help my caves. Good evening and welcome to Help my caves. I'm really looking forward to working with you tonight. Um, we've got the wonderful Mr. Mark English from Spiral Club Normal and Mandy Harris. Okay, 
Um, we're going to be doing different experiments in different areas, so things like table tipping, glass divination, Ouija boards, human pendulums. We'll explain them more when we get to do it, because we've got people coming out here already. Um, and we're going to try a different experiment tonight as well, which the team have never done, just to see how it works. And uh, you guys look like little guinea pigs. I don't come here expecting stuff to be thrown, people to be possessed, people getting pushed, that sort of stuff. Because it usually it doesn't happen like that. Sometimes it does, sometimes it kicks off all night and you have a fantastic night. But a lot of the time, you put your finger on the glass, it doesn't move. <laughs> you call out, throw something, nothing gets thrown on the right. So you've just got to prepare yourself for that. But we prefer you guys to go away tonight getting nothing than go away thinking something fishy happened. All right? That's why we don't fake anything and we don't get involved in the experiments. You have to understand here guys that our minds are much more powerful than we actually realise. And we have a conscious part of our mind and a separate unconscious part. Our conscious mind is everything, you know, everything we're aware of now, the lighting in the room, what I'm saying and so on, and just the immediate information. Your unconscious mind is like a massive storage system and it picks up things to the smallest detail that our conscious mind just thinks, oh, we don't need to know that right now, and just fills it through to the unconscious mind. We join the guests for a guided tour, with Ross Bartlett linking into the potential energies within the caves. These guys that were digging it got no idea what they were digging. I mean, they were overseen by some architects, but they were happy to be paid. And this is where our mystery begins, because it's to do with the Hellfire Club, the Hellfire Caves. Uh, the original club was set up at Medmanham, which is about eight miles further south along the banks of the River Thames. <coughs> Made up of very prominent members of society. You will be walking in the footsteps of some very prominent members of society <coughs> of this country and, and of other countries. He seems to give me the name of Johnson connecting in here somewhere, and he seems to feel that the name of Francis would connect in with my George in some way here. And as I say, I feel he would have had a link and a tie to them. I don't feel he's grounded here, guys. I don't feel, you know, he typically haunts here. I just feel he spent a lot of time here when we go back. And it's as if he just is still here at times, just to actually, I feel for you guys, just to try and make you aware of what was going on here. Um, being in charge as well of handling, the best way I could put it is handling women in some way here as well. Um, I suppose that would be, I don't know, I'd obviously I'm not aware of the history guys, I promise you I haven't researched anything and that seems a bit unusual um, for me because um, I would think it'd be a mostly a masculine place but he seems to feel that he was in charge and something to do with running or organising of women. You're on. Yeah. Oh. Moving ever deeper into the caves, we enter the banqueting hall. He um, employs a couple of local ex miners to basically dig out um, a bypass tunnel which runs behind us here now. And then the system there. So, what we front behind was dug out in the 1950s, but what we continue with dug out in the 1750s. <laughs> In this area, guys, um, I get a, a very faint sort of residual energy here, and Richard was speaking um, earlier on about um, uh, no, no Thought, I think it was called, and um, having a whistling um, sound coming um, from nowhere and, and, and getting it as an EVP. And I do feel that this would be a good area to try that, guys, if you want to have a go at that later. And I do feel that at times people going through here would experience that sort of almost like a whistling sound. And also I feel you'd hear sort of faint echoes of other noises, people talking and things like this. The group head towards the River Styx. Did, was there another, would you be aware if there was like a ritual, a specific thing they had to do here to be allowed into the next room? There, it, yeah, I mean, making that the last part of the journey. I mean, if any of you have ever been to any under uh, any other cave complex that is man-made or whatever, and there's been watercourse in there, they are inevitably called the River Styx. And the River Styx from Greek mythology is where you make that journey from one world to the underworld. So, with, even within the, the myth of the River Styx, there would have been some kind of uh, ritual, or, or, or you know. After a break, the night's vigils begin. Andy, Kerry and I go down to the banqueting hall. Um, we try not to use a torch, we want to keep it as black as possible. This is apparently where, um, sort of, say Suki? Yeah, Suki. Was killed. 
Um, well, I'm not quite sure still that's actually a fact. Um, she did die here. There is, it just yeah. depends How, whether it actually happened the way the story says. Exactly, but there has or been a death here. Or whether it was an accident or whatever, but she did die yeah, in here. It is really tragic. Did you read really that? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people are seeing here. Ross has been picking up on quite a bit. So um, we'll just see what, what happens. Well, okay, so don't leave. Will they tell you what happened, supposed to have happened to you? You can't really imagine it. The only time I've ever been spooked in a cave was at Wookie Hollow, and I think I was about six. And they were telling the story of the witch. And that frightened me, but because I was six, probably. That's the only reason. But... Okay, if there are any spirits at the banqueting hall, I'd like to come forward. We've heard a lot of stories about this place. Come and tell us your story. Is your name Suki? Sounds like a tie fit, doesn't it? Please come forward. Come and have a chat. Do you think the Blair Witch stone pines are of any significance? It's probably one of the best places I've been to, actually. Uh, if you get a chance to come down to the Hellfire Caves uh, during the day for a visit, they do a really good tour, so uh, I would recommend it. Moving on, we join Gary Brown with his team at Franklin's Cave. Oh, Oh, you're swaying. You're swaying. Who is it that's Yes, we managed to just got hers. Joe, she's not in front of you. She's always giving me a certain amount of air Yeah, I can feel it now. Okay, if that's you affecting Joe, because we're going to go gently backwards. Could be a guess. I was like this. I tried to touch Kerry because I thought she was there and she was standing. Were you bought here by the men? I know, I was like this. Where is she now? Kerry's there. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Gary. Oh, great. Okay. I, heard, I heard you say it. Yeah. Yeah. You thought you were I'm not. As soon as you've been using my energy all night and making me violently sick, do you want to carry on using my energy? And make the tapping noise for me, please? Someone's just blown straight in the back of my neck. Oh, that where, did you get that before when you were standing up, the, up yeah. there? Okay. And that was right on the back of it. It was just like somebody gone. Because where you're standing, um, Mandy thought. I thought Kerry she... was stood there, but she was actually there. So I went to reach out and say, Kerry, are you all right? And my arm was just in the dark, mm. and I was like, Kerry, where are you? And her mm. voice was. Kerry. Just there she is. You, you were standing where I am. It was right next to me. She just feels it's expecting really to see something coming from that. Well, it wanted to drop, because it was just a quick. No, it's different, isn't it? Yeah. Is there any reason you feel you want to stand there, or is it just... Only because, all the time I've been stood there, when I th ever since I thought it was Kerry, mm -hmm. I've had the feeling that someone's been stood here, watching us, going, you bunch of idiots. <laughs> That'd be about right, wouldn't it? That's, that's <laughs> just the impression that I've had, and I've kept looking, and I'm sort of going, yeah, you're right, and yeah. here we are. Yeah, but, but, and I just sort of felt sort of empathy, mm -hmm. but... Yeah. Okay, we're going down to the innocent. Right. Okay. Everybody get, get comfy and I'll tell you what we're doing. Tell you guys, all right? <coughs> I'm going to go down the tunnel yeah. and you're going to stay up here oh. for a little while. We're going to move further down the tunnel. Alan, <coughs> uh, Alan Dan and Mark and Stu are here, all right? And they're going to start calling out, asking for noises for anything to affect you, drafts, stones to be thrown. I won't tell you what we've got in the last field just yet, because it makes it too obvious to ask for. I'm interested to see if we get the same stuff again. Okay. Everyone just relax a second. Is there any spirits in this vicinity who may have frequented these caves? Can you please come forward? Can you make a sound? Let us know you're here. Were you one of the infamous Hellfire Club? Well, we're in your space. Show us what you got up to here. Lead us to the temple. Can you make a noise for us? Okay, if we go doing Rich's experiment, I hope I don't get lost. 
I'm not really sure which way I'm supposed to go. The Queen of Clubs. Can I have one? Yeah, hang on. It's cheap. Right, stop down there. Across the river sticks, into the bottom of the show, there's a table with a deck of cards on. Okay. Just next to all about the Queen of Clubs. Cool. Okay, off I go. Shouldn't have looked at that mannequin. I was doing alright until I did that. Oh shit. This isn't easy. Don't look at me like that, you scary man. Okay, now I feel like I want to run. I feel like I want to cry. Just let me go fast, fast, fast. Get out of here. Pathetic. Um, I felt really panicky. I, mean, I don't normally get scared, but I felt like um, I just wanted to get out as fast as I possibly could. Just run that down, because I want to see if I can get this body back from there. I want to compare it to what I'm going to get. Um, I had every intention of talking my way down there, doing a little bit, talking my way back again. I felt my rich while I was talking to him, but I could do my You're really, you look really freaked. I don't know who I'm hearing, but it's not us. I'm just waiting for you. Are you right? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, just a bit of a moment. Very strange sensation. I didn't want to be in there for one second more than I wanted to be. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Do you want to come with me? Yeah, I'm fine. Do you want to come with me? We are in Yinna Sanctum. Well, wow. going back up to the uh, top meet up with Lisi and Ross. Ross is going to do um, a few um, experiments with you guys. So if you could, if you'd like to form a circle and hold hands, it's a great way to keep warm in this bit. <laughs> okay, guys. While we're doing this, I want you to pay close attention as well to what you're feeling. You know, you mentioned some of you felt sick there earlier on. Uh, some of you got different, you know, feelings in the other locations. While I'm looking for the same sort of thing here as well. And um, we've had various stuff happen in the last two groups. I won't tell you because obviously that will take away. Um, the evidence of it coming through again, and I don't want to place anything in your guys' minds. We've got some nice new fresh ladies here with us. Could you please let, let us know if you're here and if you appreciate these nice ladies that have come to join you now? Can you make a sound? Our night at the Hellfire Cave draws to a close, with guests reflecting on the evening's events. This was one of the most unique places to explore in the country, and its paranormal reputation complements its intriguing, dark history. Were former members of the Hellfire Club watching our movement throughout the network of caves, but still wanting to keep their appearance and activities secret? To use a modern phrase, what happens in the Hellfire Club stays in the Hellfire Club.